everyone, and welcome to Socks episode 45. We're 45 episodes into this. That's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I'm Olivia. I'm Sydney. Tyler. And today, we don't have a plan again. We're going to riff it. We're going to have some fun. We're just going to talk about things. Um, We just got, we both got some albums, didn't we, Sid? Yeah, we did. Uh, I loved mine coming in. I actually, I put them all on my headboard now. So I got my thrilling album. Woo! It looks I nice. Think, yeah, it's really, I love the colors. It's so, like, pretty. But honestly, my favorite thing about it is the fact that I literally got photo cards for five different members. You get five That's... photo cards? No, but it comes with like some extras that aren't oh, yeah, exactly yeah. photo cards. So, okay, so I got Young Hoon with like the holographic yes! one. Young Hoon. Yes, we love Young Hoon. <laughs> this is like a ticket kind of thing, but you can like Aww. pop it out and it's a photo card and it's Hawk Neon. So pleasing to look at. No, they're so cute. I love Song Yans. You know, this is my favorite because my bias record, guys. He's so cute. I got Kevin. Yes, King. So cute. And then I got, like, extras that came <gasps> with it. And it's Jacob. Ah, it's, like, reflective. There you oh, go. Oh, there we go. And then it comes with, like, a holographic postcard. And it's Hyunjae. Ooh. And he looks so good. So... Which version That's, did you get? I got the, is it the Kick It? Oh, I think it's the Kick It okay. version. Or the Kick version. Yeah. I was going to get um, Bang, but I just ended up liking the concept for this more because this is the one where they're like in the amusement part. Oh, yeah, I like that one. So that's the one I really, really wanted. It also came with some BTS extras. Look Ooh. at that. My bias is there. So, yeah. But, you know, we're doing the album thing now. I think once I started, now I can't stop. Really yeah, bad. Same. I, I, um, yeah. How many are you on now? You're way ahead of me, Olivia. I know, I I'm only, bad. I only Olivia have three. Has collections. Like, cards. I only have three albums right now. I'm probably going to end up getting a shiny one, an Astro one, an AT's one, and a GOT7 one. But I have to pick the versions that I want. And I definitely want another BTS one, but I couldn't find the version that I wanted on Amazon. Oh, Because okay. I wanted version two from Map of the Soul. Oh, you gotta let what me are you know. Gonna get for, which one are you gonna get for ATs and got seven? I don't know. I have to pick them out. You know that I, like, I started watching, like, um, the, like, album opening, what is it, unboxing videos mm -hmm. to decide which ones that I want because I'm very picky. I also want to like the music from the albums that I buy. Even if I don't have a CD player, I'd really like to like the songs on it. Right. Um, obviously, I love all my groups, but they like some songs I like more than others. So that's what I use to decide is the albums that I buy is do I like the songs on it? Do I like like the visuals or what aspects of it? I'm not someone who's going to buy like 20 different versions of the same album. I'll probably just buy my favorite version of the album if I really like the songs on it and want it, so. Okay. Yeah. On the other hand, I pre-ordered two versions of this album without hearing anything from it. <laughs> Before they even revealed Damn. the cover, the, like, they just said they're having a comeback. Pre-ordered it. So fast. Um, yeah. They have the big photo book one. Which is cool, but I like the concept of the small one better. But I got really good pulls. Um, I got in this in this one. I got everything joy, everything joy, all joy. Wow, I've never had that before. All one member. Joyful, joyful. I've been a joyful recently. I got I ordered the Wendy album, and they just sent me another copy of the Joy album, and I kept it. What? Yeah, I was like, that's not oh, Wendy's no. album, but I'll keep it. <laughs> I would have been like, excuse me, customer service. Yeah, but it was going to be $30 to return to Korea. So I was like, fuck yeah. it, I'll keep it. It costs more than that. That'll be twice, like, the same cost as the album. Might as well get another photo card. 
And it was a different True. version from the version I already had, so I kept... Yeah. This is a... How many do you have now? Oh, God. Okay. Five, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Girl, and I haven't gotten an EXO yet, which I probably <laughs> never will. She <laughs> yeah. has three times as many as me, and she started. We started buying them at the same time. I think I had an album before you did because I had did. B. Yeah, B. I did. I know. I've been. I've been is hooked. That, is that Irene? That no, was Irene. It's, no, it's Joy. Oh, I lied. It wasn't. I oh, told you I got all Joy in this. It version. is Joy. Hmm. I saw um, it quick. We both saw it quick. And then, uh, let me show you the photo. The photo card I got of Joy was really cool too. It's it's in the mm. it's in. I had to get out the binder. <laughs> I'll just start a second page of Red Velvet. Um, this one. Mm -hmm. This one's so cute. cute. Yeah, that was really cute. Um, and then the other one I got in the other version, I got Yeri. So I'm le I'm happy. You got good ones. I did. Joy and Yuri. And there were other like really good. Th there was a lot of just good, a lot of goodies in this one. This one, I, the fo uh, first of all, it's pink. So <laughs> you know, and it's just got like a cute box. Like I love the photo shoot. It's my wallpaper on my phone right now. A little lunch box. But in here they have stickers. Yeah, the boys came with a bunch of stickers too. They have like little well they're not stickers, they're like tattoo stickers, like little fake tattoos. Oh. Dark's book. Yeah. Albums are fun just because it's like content that is like very collectible one and also like you buy it because you like it visually and i like to play the music and look through them like occasionally and it's so like it's like a relaxing thing to do yeah it's just like also it doesn't help when they're all beautiful people we yeah, love it's that like you get a really good like actual like book of like good photos with like really pretty people and you directly support you know your favorites yeah i swear if megan dropped like physical albums and stuff with photo shoots i would buy it would i would you, do Doge would you buy that for a western artist yes because it's it's yes i would if it's an artist that i think is creative and they put like a photo book or something together um that i liked like it was like cute oh really cute it was oh, like great nice. Like Frank Ocean, I can picture him putting something together interesting. And um, Steve, Jason. I can picture him putting something together that Jason was interesting. Jason would put something together really cool. True. Or Lexi Liu, she would put something together. It just has to be something that they created. Yeah, of course I would get it. Like, you know, like if they made it. Yeah. So. Okay. I would love to bring, like, I think just like Western artists should bring back the physical album. Like, I they agree. should. But with the same, like, extras, or with different things. I don't know, just something interesting. I want to learn about the artist from, like, the content in the album. That's what I want. Like, yeah. sometimes I wish that, like, I could read Hangul just so I could read, like, the notes and stuff, because a lot of their notes are very thoughtful for these projects and for albums. Like, I know BTS notes, they write thank you notes to their friends. I know that Kai wrote a thank you note to Taemin for so helping him with his solo album. Like, and just, Aww. I'd love to see that from Western My artists. Babies. Like if they were reaching out. Yeah, like I'd love to see that. And like, um, I feel like- Men are six oh. years older than- <laughs> To be fair, you see how they feel. You know, actually I agree with Tiff because we don't see it. We don't get to really hear about how they feel about the music. It's not just in, in one place. You, you have to like piece it together through several interviews, several tweets. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't get like yeah, one. No, that's thing. exactly what I mean. I, yeah. For every album from a Western artist, I would love a like short something, like some kind of booklet, some kind of like visual stimulation that also told me the story of like music and the behind the scenes. And a lot of K-pop, like, I will say a lot of the K-pop stuff definitely is mostly about the photos. 
But like they do include like like you said like their lyric books. Like BTS had a making like book in theirs for B, and they had like their handwritten lyrics as they oh, were yeah. writing them. Like then, that's so cool. All the SM photo cards, they like like draw a picture or like sign and like write a little note on the back, like. I have albums. Joy, like, find her, okay. like, a little note. I wish I could, like, th I knew what the fuck they were saying, but, you know, it's still really cute. Um, yeah. That physical albums. I guess they don't see it as lucrative anymore because they're like, who's buying physical albums? Yeah, but, then but they, it, they didn't figure out that if you made Yu Gi Oh cards for the girls and the gays, that they would buy them. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually worth something exactly yeah also let's not let's not lie like if j cole or drake had like a visual album Dude, something boys would be like, buying they, that shit too they would buy be buying that like they would eat it up be like oh you know, like drake wrote this letter inside of his album that did it like they would eat that up like they like True. knowing about these people that they admire. I think everyone wants to know a little bit more about the people they admire. Yeah, I think there's That's a lot true. they can learn from the mm -hmm. merchandising, especially because like now the only way it's prof uh, most of the way big artists in the West profit is from touring. Um, Concerts. Yeah, and uh, they kind of can't tour right now. They're starting to tour again, but I feel honestly a little bit. Like, I was really proud of BTS, actually, for canceling their tour. Because it seemed like they really didn't want to fucking do it. And it showed to me that they cared about the fans. Really. Uh, that they, like, after trying so hard to make it happen, that they canceled it in the midst of the Delta variant. Because it, it, it showed me that they didn't want to, you know, be a super spreader. They're really responsible. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. And um, yeah. Americans they don't really have really the option. To, yeah, it's they worked hard, really, though. really hard to try and save it. Like, that's why they only postponed it for so long. And also, I know that they were really worried about the crew. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, they, you know, they they also, like, got a lot of money together to support the crew that was supposed to work on the concert because of, like, everything, you know, a lot of people who work concerts haven't been making money. Mm -hmm. So, like, stuff like that. I definitely think they worked really hard. I also appreciate, you know, being a ticket holder myself. I appreciate the refund as well because mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't get refunds for certain events. So glad but i was really sad i won't lie i was really sad when it got canceled because i was like <laughs> damn i mean i, I was know tickets but like are hard to get they're hard yeah, yeah, yeah. To get. it's really hard to get <laughs> and it's a really and like i know it sucks and it's it's like honestly awful like, i felt so bad for everybody but also like that it, it was really responsible of them yeah to be to be willing to disappoint people in order to keep them safe so it just spoke to their character a lot. It's exactly. And it's kind of crazy how people aren't talking about like I feel like I haven't seen as much reporting on the variant and how severe it is versus like when corona first started. Like I feel like oh. everyone's tired of hearing about it, so they don't want to like make people scared again and also things are starting to open up. So a lot of for businesses, they don't want it to be like, "Oh, it's really that bad." But like my friend was telling me that where she lives, like, there are no more hospital beds in yeah. the hospital currently. And so, like, in the critical care unit. So, like, if there was a random car accident, if, like, someone had a heart attack, they, would, they wouldn't have a bed. Like, they don't, they don't have beds anymore. Yeah. I mean, it, it's... I just don't think it's feasible or easy to tour right now, especially a world tour. Like, on top of the Delta variant, you also go to, like, a new country, and some of these countries have two-week quarantines that are mandatory. Everyone has to be them. How is it? How is that going to work tour-wise? You know, like, there's a lot to consider. But a lot of and American I, artists are touring, and I think yeah. it's because they don't have the money cushion that all this is giving them. Yeah, it, it sucks. I just don't see that as, like, a good tour like that's hard for everyone it so sucks i'm for just everybody i'm just like it's good that they canceled it because i just don't see this working until next year you know
Yeah, and like the fun of touring for artists isn't just the obviously the performing is huge, but like you know, it's getting to travel the world and getting to see a bunch of things. And they don't get to do that. They literally have to stay in their hotel room, cooped up, and do nothing. And then you also yeah. like you also have to deal with the guilt of like, what if I get thousands of people sick? Yeah, it just doesn't sound. Doesn't yeah. sound right. Doesn't sound good. Um, so I'm glad BTS had that option. Mm-hmm. I'm glad K-pop had that option. And then, you know, it was re- like it's kind of crazy that they had been like delving in this Beyond Live thing before, and then boom, like internet concerts. So like they were ready. True. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Look, I'm not gonna lie. When that's when I first bought my ticket for Swoozu for like BTS's online concert, I was like, oh, this is so you know, like man. When I tell you, I had a ball. I had mm. no problem waking up. I set my alarms. I was ready to go. Like, yeah. And I enjoyed it so much that it was definitely worth it. Yeah, um, I shouldn't have bought tickets to the fan meeting. You know? If it was a concert, I think I would have been a little bit more uh, happy with it. But like, that was thirty dollars for like an extended episode of Idol Champ where nobody wanted to be there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I bought. I bought like multi view and stuff, which I guess is more expensive, but it was fun because like I got to see every angle of everything going on. I Ooh. watched Young Cook sneak up on Tay and throw water on his head. Like I watched that in real time when other people were watching. You know who was actually performing. I needed to see that moment. <laughs> like, I, I, I needed like a close up on Yoongi when they told him that he thought be a good stripper. You know, like those things are important to me. I like the live concerts a lot. And I like the ones like that, that are films like an actual concert. Because I, I've seen some live concerts that are, you know, the virtual ones, and they do like the VR experience where like the person dancing in the suit. And I then, know what you're talking. And then shut up. <laughs> and let me see, I love the artist, but I was not here for it. I, I did not enjoy myself. And I was like, I could just watch you sing, man, and just do, like, regular dancing. I didn't need to watch the virtual you. Like, I just wanted to see you perform. Like, I was at a concert, you know? But I do like the online concert experience when it's done right. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I I think we're going to be stuck with it for a long time. (laughs) Or fortunately, in some sort I mean, it's true that, like, people who live in places that tours don't normally come, they get to see them, and that's really cool. Um, I mean, I, I miss, I mean, I've seen some live music, but I, I haven't been to like a big concert in a really long, since we went to see Tyler, the creator, oh. I haven't seen oh. like a big stadium concert since then. So I, I miss those, but, oh. um, I, yeah, I just was like saying mostly that I wished it was a concert, not a fan meeting. I think the fan meeting thing is kind of. We missed the concert we were supposed to go to in LA a few, was that a few days ago? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A few days ago. <laughs> it's okay though. I'll, I'll just like to say, none of us also got tickets to the next Tyler tour. That's cool we too. So hard. We tried so I was in hard. line like the second it came up. Yeah, I no, like, the second, the- like I was on there literally. I want to say maybe three minutes after it dropped and could not get tickets. It, like, everything keeps selling out so fast. Like, even the event we're supposed to go to, just because, like, I think people are, like, really tight it to start. To go out, which is yeah, not like, a good thing. It's crazy. It's crazy. You can't get anything. Yeah. But, uh, still, I'm still hopeful. I'm looking forward to it. I got my army rem- membership ready for the next BTS concert, so I will be on the queue early. Don't mess with me. Like I will really get those tickets. I have to. <laughs> here, here. I'll I, I'll get tickets too. Fuck, I want to go see BTS. Yes, let's go. I want to see BTS oh, so bad. I want to see them. Experience. Like, it looks like they throw, I'm, like, I'm do a really great glad concert. that I got to go to their last concert. And I will say that was a lot of privilege because of like 
extenuating circumstances, but that was like the last world tour that they did. <laughs> and I will say that it was really soon, like really soon after I got into them. Cause I think like I got into them like April of that mm-hmm. year. And then the concert was like the end of May and I ended up going. Mm. So that was really, really fun. Yeah. I would like to go just to see what it's about. It always is. Man, we don't have to like really put in for this because I got it's gotta be me, Brittany, you guys. Like Yeah. It would be fun just to see you and Brittany and how y'all going in. How y'all are with them. Like (laughs) watch me be the one who cries. (laughs) (laughs) That's what happened last time. Guys, I brought my like my like real life friend like my best friend to this bts concert she is not a fan of k-pop she's not she's like very very much like a regular everyday person she listens to like mostly black artists but you know she consumes like what the general public consumes no deviation really she doesn't even like listen to like new artists or like sub artists like she only knows the top the top ones and i brought her with me because she's my best friend and i was like i need someone to go with me and i had no k-pop friends in real life at this point mm. i mean i had you guys but like i just didn't i don't think you guys we, were like we, we, we were like new but we weren't fan. like in it yeah. i was not a k-pop fan still not <laughs> i'll take too far to, i'm sorry let me get me back into my altar persona i i'm just joking i, I i'll shut up <laughs> anyways so i brought her to this concert and i was jamming i was doing my thing she has videos of me twerking a tear and mic drop i don't care i was doing it i was out there and again still early days but that's what that's what i think propelled me into my like stan culture is actually going to the concert because it was so much fun but they gave their little after speeches where they were like, oh, we're so grateful and we really appreciate having you fans here. Like, our music, we're so glad you enjoy it. And it transcends, like, language. And Jungkook cried. And I remember at that point, I was like, oh, my God, my heart. But I turned around and my friend's bawling. <laughs> like, like tear, mascara. I was like, what? are you okay? And she was like, it's just so beautiful. The, the music was good and like i'm just saying they just they clearly love each other and love the fit and i was like oh my god girl like yeah. it's okay like you need some tissue and it just it made me laugh because it was clearly like okay this is an experience anyone could enjoy and i remember i posted a bunch of stuff about it and if my friend didn't go i was gonna bring my brother and he texted me later like damn i should have gone i was like nope you ain't shit. Because <laughs> he was like, I don't even know if it's for me. Then he was jealous. Exactly. I cannot imagine. Anyway. Yeah, no, I saw this. It, I, it I saw just this. be funny. <laughs> I saw Isaiah's this. really cool, though. My brother's yeah, he really was, cool. He I would not always laugh at me the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Judging from what you said, he seems like a guy that actually be cool. Wait, damn, I thought I was on mute for a second. That actually recorded it. Um, What'd you say, Liv? Oh, there's this woman who posted a picture, like this TikTok of her husband who says he doesn't like K-pop dancing to Lolo by Wavy. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, don't keep my love on the wall. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone likes I'm telling you, my K-pop. sister, who is like, I don't know why Sydney likes this and spends so much time on this, blah, blah, blah. Yo, the moment I caught her, in the shower singing Wanho, I was like, it's over. It's but over. Shut up. It's done. In this. I know. My parents were like, Honestly, I'm so though, sick of this. And then I hear my dad going, call me, baby. Babe, call me, baby. Call me. <laughs> no I'm like, way. Dad, I caught you. And he's like, I like that I call yes. me baby song. Exactly. I caught you. That's stupid. It's for real. It's for real. The moment, like, when I tell you she put losing you on repeat, it was in the shower, like, Losing you. I was like, okay. You just gotta find so, the one. The one that hits the right spot for them. Literally in my room, like, this can't be happening. I, feel- I, started, I started filming just the door of the bathroom. And it was like, ooh. I could hear it. <laughs> yeah, I was in the I car. Hate this conversation because it's, 
it I feel called out even though it's not about me because like I'm joking I do like it honestly with k-pop anyone can find something they like in it it's relatively broad and if you like music you're gonna like something in k-pop mm-hmm. um so that's just funny but this conversation is just funny because olivia's ho- saying that he's like i don't like k-pop and then he's like that's me that's I, but i never like, i never, no, I never so say that I, like put well, up a I bit think, about I think it the difference though is that like i'm a stan lives a stan I think you're just a casual listener, just like most listener. like music listeners are in the West, which is yeah, yeah. fine. Like, and I actually appreciate that because it definitely gives some buffer space between like some of our opinions and mm-hmm. the kinds of things we talk about. Like, I like that there's a distance between you and these artists that you admire. Because with BTS, for me, the line gets very blurry. I'm very <laughs> like, I know that I'm partial, so like. When we have conversations, you're like, oh, well, this can be viewed in that way. I'm like, damn, I mean, you're right. Like, <laughs> To be fair, sometimes I go hard on K-pop. The truth is, I, I, I feel the same way about Western artists. Like, I don't necessarily, like, there's few a few artists that the lines have become blurred for me. But for the most part, it is distance between me and the artists, even if I like them a lot. I just feel like I go hard on K-pop sometimes because we talk about it so much, but... Generally, I would probably say the same thing about Western artists. If like you guys are stands of Western artists, and we were talking about Western music, it's all the same. You know, I just don't want to come off like I'm like judging K-pop too hard, which I know I do. Um, but you know, it's the same. Everyone well, you know, around we... the globe is the same. <laughs> I think it just like puts it actually puts a lot of Western entertainment in a microscope. In a lot of ways so it's like mm. they viewed our entertainment from an outsider's perspective digested it made their thing and now we're viewing it from an outsider's perspective so it's it's just like almost like an interesting like like study of how like what pop culture represents about a culture and mm. how people interpret it and you know the fact that it's it shows how globalized the music industry has gotten where it's like producers from england and the united states and from sweden are all making songs on albums all over the world it's just it's just an interesting like microcosm of a lot of the things happening in pop culture and i think that's yeah. why i'm so interested but i i really appreciate how much it's broadened my personal views of music like a lot i'm really thankful for that in a lot of ways like I've listened, you know, reggaeton my whole life. Like, I've listened to maybe, like, a French song because a teacher of mine liked it. You know, like, I've been introduced to music through that. And I also took world music when we were in college, which also, like, did a lot for me. But I'll say that, like, like, actually, like, really appreciating and being a fan of an artist from another country that sings and speaks in another language, I never expected that for myself, you know? And so it's very interesting to see that, like, I can appreciate music that I don't necessarily understand without effort. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, most people are like, oh, music, you just enjoy it. Like, it's interesting because now I feel like I digest music differently. Like, before, you know, you just listen to it. You know the lyrics because it's in your language. You absorb that. Now you, like, I listen to, like, any song. I listen to the feeling Then I, like, look up and try and interpret the lyrics. Then I, like, look at it from a different perspective or trying to understand it from a perspective different from my own, which I think is very interesting. I was listening to a song today, and, you know, it's one of the songs we reacted to on here by Cold. And I was like, damn, I don't know what he's saying, but I be singing this song, like, all the time. Like, why do I like it so much, you know? Like, what am I getting from that? It's like you interpret it through, like like you said, the way that you feel, the emotion that you get. You don't even know what the artist is saying when you listen to it for the first time. It's interesting. I feel like I've never had to do that as a Westerner. Because, yeah. you know, the music in our industry is, it makes up so much of the world industry. I've mm-hmm. always heard things in English. So that's different too. Even, like, stuff that got big here that was foreign, like ABBA, that was still in English. 
So it was like, or, you know, the Beatles, that's England, obviously the home of English. So yeah. One Direction. One Direction, like... yeah. Anything big that's foreign, it generally is like an English speaking one or Spanish, which is like the second most spoken language here. So yeah. we all have some kind of proximity to the United States. Yeah. So, like, Despacito taking off here, or Gasolina, like, was never, like, a surprise. Like, that was like, oh, yeah, yeah that exactly, could get big exactly. here. But so, uh, b breaking those two, that language barrier of Spanish and English has always been very tough. Yeah, so it's interesting that now, like, Korea, which, again, is a very <laughs> small country comparatively, is, like, is making waves in music right now even in the states i think that's pretty interesting yeah actually i've been yeah. reading a lot about the swedish music scene um and kind of like how it got so global because it, it's such a small country kind of like korea they've had like such a blow up of pop music ever since abba um and i checked it out because i remember last week i had said that the red velvet album kind of gives me an abba vibe and then i was looking through my book and i realized that all the producers except for on one song were Swedish. And I was like, oh, wow. that makes sense. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, actually. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, I was like, this gives me an ABBA vibe. Oh, they're all Swedish. And I've yeah. known that they've done little musical references to ABBA before by Swedish producers in Red Velvet songs, like Red Flavor. Um, so I was like looking it up and it was like, oh, it's a really small country, but a lot of them speak English and they have really good after school music programs. <laughs> and like that's kind of, and like also like ABBA. So it's like interesting to see another small country take on the pop thing, but without the English component and without the public education thing either. I mean, I'm sure they have good after school music programs. I don't know, but you know, K pop has its own little unique formula popularity that's different from Sweden's but it was interesting to see that small countries kind of figure out a specialty that they could do that's their export that's entertainment yeah yeah um very quickly guys can we take a break <laughs>